Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 and another part of this experiment where we're taking a look what would happen if you had the perfect player in FM19. Now we are up to the age of 24 with this player, I think we've got about 8 years into the future and as you can see from his career stats he's moved from Leighton Orient to Man City to Spurs and now to PSG where he's been there for about 6 months since January. Uh, for a £108 million transfer, a huge transfer fee. What we're going to do today is go forward five more years into the future, up to the age of 29, and we're just going to see how he does if he stays at PSG and if he can win any more Champions League titles. Um, so there's not too much else going on in this experiment that we're going to look to change, but one thing I am considering is that for the next part, because this player will be coming to retirement, I may think about adding a different player in who is also perfect, but who will play at a non-league team for his entire career. So if you're interested in me adding that into the next part, do hit that like button. If we can get, let's say, a couple of hundred likes, I'll know that you guys want to see that. It will mean the experiment runs a little bit longer, but I think you guys will find that quite interesting. So you'll have two players to check up on uh, in the next part if we do do that. So hit that like button if you'd like to see that. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe so you see the next part when it comes out in the next day or two. Um, but let's go forward five years now and see how he's gone on. Well, we are now five years into the future and we're going to start by looking at how he got on with PSG in his first full season at the club. So you can see there was a nice friendly cup going on, which they managed to lose on penalties to Watford. I'm not sure he played in that game, but they actually lost the Trophy de Champion to Leon. He was playing in this game, Kovacic and Junior getting the goals. But not enough, they were beaten by a Nikic winner in the 53rd minute. But you can see their form after that, they really did come back strongly. He was scoring an awful lot of goals here. Um, that's, what, six in his first four games. Um, and they're winning a lot of games by with clean sheets as well, by quite a few goals. Um, but an exceptional winning streak here that continues for quite some time until they lose to Spurs 3-2. He did score in that game, but Harry Kane as well, his rival, scoring in there as well. But their league form is 100% at this point. We're getting to the end of the year, and they still won every single game in the league and in the domestic cups. Um, Sabine Angers 3-0 as well, then Marseille 2-1, and then 4-1 in the semi-final. He scored a couple of goals there. And finally, they lost in the league, a 3-2 defeat. They had a man sent off when they were 1-0 down after 12 minutes. They still went 2-1 up, but unfortunately, they couldn't see the game through. And so the hope of a perfect season did come to an end. They did beat Porto, though, 3-2. He got a couple of goals there, one of them a penalty, before they drew with Toulouse 2-2. Um, beat Porto 3-0 quite easily after that. They've got Richarlison playing for them now, but knocked out of the French Cup by Marseille 1-0. So it's... I mean, this has been an exceptional season, but they seem to be falling at certain hurdles. They did beat Chelsea 4-0, beating 1-0 um, at Stamford Bridge, but enough to get them into the semi-finals, where they drew with Manchester City. A Gabriel Jesus equaliser in the 90th minute meant that at the away game, they were beaten 2-0 and knocked out at the semi-final stage. So the only thing that I think they won this season was actually... I mean, because they were in the semi-final of that other cup competition, weren't they? But... I know, that is really poor. They've only won the league this year, essentially. And it, you know, winning the league isn't bad, but that's all they managed to win, which with the team that they've got and the run that they were on is quite disappointing. Now, the following season, they did win the Trophy de Champion this time. He got the third goal in that game. Uh, perfect start to the season yet again. Loads of goals racking up for him. I'd be surprised if he isn't breaking a few records here. Um, doing all right in the Champions League as well. Beat Atletico Madrid 1-0. He's scoring plenty of goals there. They were beaten by Monaco, though, 3-1, so still no unbeaten season for him. Uh, also beaten by Atletico Madrid. They lost Neymar's testimonial, which for some, play, some reason took place on the 4th of January. They had a couple of friendlies here. I guess it's a winter break there. They've put a couple of friendlies in. Um, but still going in the Coupe de la Ligue, beat Rennes 3-2. Um, Inter in the Champions League, 2-2 draw away from home. He did score there. But 2-0 at home, Caput and Mbappe with the goals. Um, Coupe de la Ligue final, they did manage to win that. 3-0, Castan, Benali and Huzing getting the goals. Uh, they also got past Spurs, 3-0, 2 for Giancaldo Jr. there. He scored in the other game as well to send them through to the semi-finals. Beaten in the French Cup quarter-final by Monaco in extra time and lost to Man City 1-0 away. Another man sent off and another 90th minute goal for City. But 4-0 at home 
hat trick for Giancarlo Jr. against his former team means that they did make it to the Champions League final, but they were beaten 2 1 by Real Madrid. Again, a man sent off after two minutes, and so they weren't able to lift this competition. They did go 1 0 up as well at the Puskas Ferenc Stadion. Um, but unfortunately, that was not enough for them. And as you can see, after this season here, he did move back to Manchester City for £180 million. A huge transfer fee there. They brought him back after letting him go on a free against their will. That was me doing that. Um, but they signed him for £180 million. So he's back at England, back at Manchester City, where he won all of his Champions League titles and loads of Premier League titles. Can he do it again? That's the question. Now, while he was at PSG those two seasons... 46 and 57 in his first full season, but 48 and 58 in his second season. Both times getting over 9.0 rating across all of his league games. Huge number of goals and everything else. He was absolutely fantastic. The question now is, how have they done at Manchester City? If we have a look at their senior squad schedule, just going back. Uh, so that was where we left off. So we're now onto this season here. You can see in the first game, they did beat Spurs 2-0 in the Community Shield. Giancaldo Jr. scoring in that game to win his first trophy since rejoining the team for £180 million. Um, Took him a little while to get his goals, but he got two against Burnley and then 3-1 over Newcastle. They did lose a couple of games, though, including to Liverpool as well. For going on a nice winning streak, beat Spurs 4-1. A couple of goals there. Harry Kane on the score sheet once more. Beat Roma. Spurs again beaten. Spurs under the thumb of Man City now that Giancaldo Jr. is back. Um, and he did get a hat-trick against Fulham. They lost to Manchester United, though, at home. Another man sent off. It seems to me when they go down to 10 men that Giancaldo Jr.'s team always loses. But they were 2-0 up before getting a man sent off. And then within 12 minutes, they found themselves behind. That must have been a very exciting opening half an hour to that game. Um, but then a really good run of form. They didn't lose for quite some time, taking out teams in the Champions League. And then through in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal, 3-1 over Chelsea. Um, beat Charlton in the FA Cup as well managed to beat Manchester United 2-1 in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup and then 1-0 away he got the winning goal there at Old Trafford that would have been quite special for him 91,000 attendance Old Trafford that's gone up quite a bit uh, beat Chelsea as well 3-0 they're doing very very well at this point and 1-1 at the new Camp as well only a late Barcelona goal saving them there but in the return fixture they did get the win 1-0 Josh Phillips with the goal means they made it to the next round. Beaten by Manchester United Old Trafford, though. They were through in the FA Cup, though. Another good win there. Uh, through in the FA Cup semi final, uh, quarter final as well. 2 0. Josh Phillips, Giancaldo Jr. And then through in the FA Cup semi final. He got both goals at Anfield to knock out Liverpool. And then 3 0 over Monaco away from home. 3 1 at home means they made it to the semi finals of the Champions League. And they actually beat Real Madrid 2 1 at the Bernabeu at home. They lost 2-0. Oh, I really thought they were going to do it there after this nice winning streak. It wasn't enough. They did win the FA Cup final, though, on penalties. Uh, he did score the first penalty there, and they managed to lift another trophy that year. Um, did they win the Carabao Cup final? I can't even remember. They got through to the semi-final. They did win the Carabao Cup final. 3-1, Josh Phillips Jr. and Dil Soren with the goals. So they did manage to win a couple of trophies and the Community Shield that year. Pretty sure they also won the Premier League, but we can check that after. Um, Milinkovic, Savic getting a testimonial. They did beat Liverpool 2-1 here as well. He scored the winning goal in the 83rd minute, or what turned out to be the winning goal anyway. Um, good start to the league season, getting quite a few wins in. They beat Spurs again, 2-1. Um, drew with United at Old Trafford in the league, but they're doing really well, not losing them almost any games at this point. 5-0 um, over Ustend there. Hat-trick for this Josh Phillips kid, who is popping up quite a bit. Won at the Emirates as well, 2-1. Um, or Drew with Liverpool 1-1 at Anfield as well. So they're doing really well in the league. Have they lost in the league? I don't think they have. They're unbeaten in the league at this point. Winning an awful lot of games. Spurs removed. Threw in the FA Cup. Um, third round against Burnley, beat Arsenal 3-0 in the Carabao, Carabao Cup semi-final first leg, 2-1 in the second leg to take themselves to another Carabao Cup final. They are still unbeaten in the league, lost to Real Madrid away in the Champions League, but did win the Carabao Cup against Southampton, 4-0 against Spurs there in the FA Cup fifth round, and they did beat Real Madrid 3-2 
at home, but it was not enough. They were knocked out on away goals, um, and so they didn't make it through to the next round of the Champions League, which is quite disappointing. But they are still unbeaten in the league. They've lost the FA Cup semi-final to Liverpool, but I think they have finished the league unbeaten. Unless I'm reading that wrong, we'll check in a second. I'm pretty sure they just won that league unbeaten, becoming the Invincibles, um, the second set of Invincibles in the Premier League. Um, and now starting off the next season, Community Shield, a good 4-1 win over Bournemouth. Doing really well. They have lost here to Manchester United at home as well, which is pretty poor. Lost in the Champions League just before that, but a huge winning run beginning after that. Through in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal, 2-1 over Arsenal. Uh, knocking out Birmingham, easily removing Hull in the Carabao Cup semi-final. Looking to win another one of those. And they did do it 3-0 over Spurs there. They won 1-0 away in the Champions League as well. 2-1 at home to knock out Porto. Through in the FA Cup quarterfinal to the semis, where they also knocked out West Ham on penalties. But they were being 3-0 by Barcelona in the, in the Champions League. But what a comeback. They've come to win 4-0 at home to knock out. I was sure they were out after that. 3-0 at the, Berna, at the um, New Camp, you would expect to be knocked out of the Champions League. But then in 113th minute, Rian Brewster, the former Liverpool youngster, delivered the victory that sent them through to the quarterfinals. They then were being 2-0 by Bayern away, and at home, they could only win 1-0. They weren't able to make a great comeback that time. And you can see in the FA Cup final, they beat Arsenal 2-0 to win another FA Cup. So the trophies are coming their way. Now, if we just have a quick look at the Premier League table, going back to where we started, which is about here then you can see they won the league by quite some way. 18 points over Spurs. Uh, Liverpool actually won the league the next year. Um, so actually, I don't think he was at the club at this point. We'll double check on which Premier League titles he won. But two points clear Liverpool that season. Uh, the following year, though, 96 points, unbeaten season. They didn't lose a single game, a few draws, but a huge 29 wins. By far the best and invincible season the Premier League has had. Um, absolutely fantastic. He is an invincible Premier League winner now. And they did win it in the most recent season as well. So it looks like he won the last two Premier Leagues, but they missed out to Liverpool um, in his first season back at the club. So finishing second that year. But Man City totally dominating the league table. Spurs runner up four years in a row. That must have been quite disappointing for them. But Giancaldo Jr. doing very, very well. And the question now is how, would, how did he do with England over the previous few years? Now, this is um, where we left off. They were in the World Cup groups trying to go through. They beat New Zealand 6-0. Uh, he got three in there. He got a hat-trick against Colombia. That's where we left off last time. <laughs> he then scored one, two, three, four, five, six, seven goals against Uruguay in the second round. This is the format the World Cup has changed at this point. So this is the expanded competition. But an 8-4 victory. He scored seven goals in one game. A double hat-trick plus in a World Cup knockout game. That is sensational. And he'd already got six goals by that point. So he's got 13 goals in his first three World Cup games. And then another hat-trick against Sweden as well. That's 16 goals in four World Cup games. <laughs> he then went and scored four against Belgium as well. To beat them 6-1 in a World Cup quarter-final. That was in extra time as well that they got all those goals. It was 1-1 at the end of normal time. They went and scored five in extra time. But it wasn't enough against Italy. They were beaten 2-1 in the World Cup semi-final. They did win the playoff 2-0. Harry Kane get a consolation goal there as well. Um, but if he got four goals here, I, that is sensational. 3-6, 13, four, uh, 16, and then four more here as well. Takes him to 20. And then he scored here. 21 goals in one World Cup is insane. How did he do that? 21 goals in a World Cup is sensational. He will, He's setting a record there that nobody will ever, ever beat. I can't believe he got seven goals against Uruguay. Um, and you can see in their European League Division A, they got a few wins here as well. 7-0 in a friendly here. He loves getting so many goals. Look, that's another double hat-trick for England. Uh, beaten by France, though. Uh, did beat Ukraine 3-0 and then Ecuador. The following year in the International League, they did make it to the semi-final. Beat Italy 2-1 and then they did manage to beat Germany 3-2 to win a final against Germany, finally. Um, 
Qualification went really well the following year in the European Championship. 3-2 over Germany, another win there. 2-1 over Switzerland, 3-1 uh, over Switzerland, 2-1 over Turkey. 3-0 over Hungary there, he's not getting as many goals in this competition. Josh Phillips getting four goals in the Championship quarter-final. But they were beaten by Germany, despite beating them earlier in the tournament. Beaten by Germany, 3-2. Lewis Cook sent off and two late goals, giving Germany an unassailable lead. And Jadon Sancho scoring late wasn't enough to save England. Knocked out the semi-final stage for another year. They did get past Italy on penalties, but then they lose another final to Germany, who always have the upper hand over England in the long run. Another World Cup campaign, though. Um, doing reasonably well, getting past New Zealand and Uruguay through against Colombia 3-1. Giancarlo Jr. getting nowhere near as many goals in this World Cup, which is why they were beaten in a World Cup quarterfinal by Wales, which is absolutely unacceptable. But I think he only got three goals at that World Cup, which when you take away 21 goals from your campaign, you're never going to do as well. But did beat Japan 8-0. Again, he gets five goals in that game. And in the most recent campaign they beat Andorra 12-0 he got four goals in that one but uh, Ryan Deacon getting five in that game um, and Ecuador they beat him 5-0 as well he gets so many hat tricks for England uh, they got the European Championship qualifying campaign still to go but as you can see Giancaldo Jr 182 England goals in 146 caps and he's still only 29 that is an absolutely incredible record when we look at his milestones and his biography here, um, this is where we kind of left off before he moved to Spurs, winning the Europa League in 2024. He moved to PSG, um, won the Coupe de la Ligue three times, the French Cup once, the Trophy de Champion once, and Liga three times as well. So three more league titles there. He's come back to Manchester City, um, and he's lifted the Community Shield three times, three Carabao Cups, two FA Cups and two Premier League titles, including an invincible season as well. So he's doing reasonably well with his trophy cabinet. If we look at the World Golden Ball, you have to... Oh, that's the World Cup. Um, if we look at the World Golden Ball, uh, we will see he is winning it every single year. So he won it three years in a row with City, three years in a row with Spurs, twice with PSG, beating Mbappe, his club mate, twice there. Um... And now he's won it three more times with Manchester City as well. Um, not too many surprises. He's always going to be winning that now. But he's also won it 10 years on the trot as well, which is pretty, pretty special. Um, and if we look at the World Player of the Year, no difference there. He's won it every year. World Team of the Year, he is always going to be in this. Um, the all-time uh, World Team of the Year, he is the number one player here. 481 goals in 628 games will do that for you. Mbappe is doing incredibly well, though, and that is quite a strong team. Bernardo Silva has ended up dropping into Barcelona. He's now at Newcastle, um, but he is in the all-time World Team of the Year. Um, Fornals, Milinkovic, Savic, Tierney, Eda, Miltau, Skriniar, Kimmich and Ter Stegen make it up. That's a very strong team, it has to be said. Harry Kane is in here as well on the bench. Neymar only on the bench as well. And obviously Ronaldo and Messi won't be in here because they will not have had enough time to get into these teams. I don't even know if they were in the early teams. Ronaldo was. Um, but Lionel Messi... Oh no, Lionel Messi's playing in defensive midfield apparently, uh, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but they have retired now. No longer in football. I assume that's... a also true for Ronaldo, just out of interest. He's not a manager, is he? No, he is also retired at the age of 39. Um, so that is going to be it for this part of the experiment. So if you have enjoyed this experiment, do drop a, the, a like on the video. And if also, if you would like to see in the next part a second player created and dropped into one of the non-league teams, and do let me know. He will stay there for his entire career. So could be quite an interesting experiment there. But make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel as well. And until next time. See ya.